Do you know there's a disease that affects up to 40% of the women who come into my clinic? Hi, I'm Dr. Gil Wilshire. I'm a board certified reproductive endocrinologist and I've helped thousands of people overcome their infertility problems. Today we're going to discuss endometriosis. Endometriosis causes a lot of pain, suffering, and unfortunately infertility. Now the causes of endometriosis are somewhat mysterious, but most of the problems arise from what happens when a woman has her period on the inside of her body. Normally when a woman menstruates, endometrial tissue comes out of the body, goes where it's supposed to go. Unfortunately, in some women, endometrial tissue is not inside the uterus, but grows outside the uterus, generally into the, into the pelvis. When the bleeding occurs into the pelvis, it causes pain and inflammation, and this can cause infertility. Now, endometriosis is very common. If you look at the general female population, these are healthy women who are having babies, perhaps 10 to 15% of them have endometriosis. Doesn't seem to cause problems in those circumstances. Unfortunately, there are many women uh, who aren't that fortunate. Sometimes the diagnosis of endometriosis is very easy. A woman has horribly painful periods, she has pain with intercourse, pain throughout the menstrual cycle, and uh, on examination we feel nodules or painful spots. Sometimes on ultrasound we see abnormal cysts in the ovaries that have what we call a chocolate appearance. Uh, when a woman has missed days of her life uh, due to painful periods, if she's missed a day of work or a day of school, the chance of her having endometriosis is at least 80%. Now, some women have no signs of endometriosis apart from their infertility. No pain, regular painless periods, it doesn't seem like a big deal. They can have normal ultrasounds, normal examinations, and still have very significant disease. Now, if we suspect a woman has endometriosis, um, we don't think it's that bad, her pain isn't that bad, Frequently, we'll try to establish a pregnancy without establishing a firm diagnosis. Endometriosis is interesting in that it usually does not block the fallopian tubes. If we suspect a little endometriosis, frequently we'll just induce ovulation, perform inseminations, and try to get pregnant anyway. Unfortunately, if a woman's pain is affecting the quality of her life, or we find dis dis uh, disturbing issues uh, on examination, then surgery may be required. Unfortunately, the only way to diagnose endometriosis is with surgery. We must be able to find the disease, cut it out, and have it put under the microscope and, and diagnosed by a pathologist. Now, our understanding of the treatment of endometriosis continues to evolve. Um, the literature is somewhat confusing on this, but what I can share with you is that uh, with modern surgical techniques, where we go in and excise or take out the disease, recurrence rates actually can be fairly low. Uh, fertility after this type of surgery goes up dramatically and recovery is very rapid. So if a woman does have this type of surgery and if we are successful in uh, getting rid of the disease, making sure the tubes are open, usually we begin, we begin fertility treatments very, very rapidly, perhaps in a month or two. Uh, we have a window of opportunity and if we can get everything tuned up, frequently we're gratified with pregnancies uh, for fairly rapidly. If we are successful in establishing a pregnancy in a woman with endometriosis, then long-term management of her endometriosis with hormones and other medications certainly is very reasonable. And we like to avoid going back to the operating room as, as much as we can. Hopefully one and done is all that's required. I hope this has been interesting to you. This is Dr. Wilshire at Missouri Fertility in Columbia, Missouri. Thank you for your attention. If you like this, please feel free to click like, watch us on YouTube, Follow us on Twitter. Do all that good stuff. Thank you very much.